An array is a tool that is best used in the introductory phases of multiplication, right? Wrong. Arrays are one of the most powerful tools for making connections between multiplication facts. They are not only useful to introduce multiplication, but they are a phenomenal tool for helping students make connections between facts, build understanding, and eventually move into multi-digit multiplication in a very natural way. So this is what your typical array practice worksheet might look like. So here we see that students have to count the number of rows and then they count the number of objects in each row, fill in the blanks, and then write the product. This is pretty low level thinking and really doesn't incorporate any deep thinking. So I want to talk about a few ways that we can use arrays in a much more effective way that incorporates deeper thinking. So we can use arrays to make visual connections between different multiplication facts. This visual here helps us see that if we begin with four groups of five and add one more group of five, we now have five groups of five. So here we can see a connection between these two facts, four times five and five times five. And it helps us understand that in order to solve five times five, we can use what we know about four times five and then just add one more group of five, right? Here's another one. Here we are starting with um, an array that represents the, the multiplication fact three times five. So we have three rows of five. Now we're going to double it. And I've used two different colors to make that even more visual. So we can easily see that we've doubled that array. Now we see a connection or a relationship between three times five and six times five we see that six times five is the double of three times five. So what does this tell us? Well, if I know that three times five is 15, then six times five must be 30 because it's the double. Okay, so this array makes that whole idea very visual. It's much easier for kids to see this when they have a picture to look at or a visual than when you're just trying to explain it with digits and symbols. Here's another one, we see six rows of nine. So this array represents the fact six times nine. Um, we could relate this, sometimes I like to use the analogy of um, rows of chairs in a gym, right? It's something that students can easily relate to. Now, if we want to take away half of those rows of chairs, now we have three rows of nine left. This helps us form a connection between six times nine and three times nine, right? If we know that six times nine is 54, well, three times nine has to be half of that. So we're forming relationships, we're forming connections between different multiplication facts. Another way that we can use arrays with multiplication is to break up factors into smaller parts. And I love this activity. There are a million different ways that we can break up arrays. And this is a great activity to do with your class because there's just so much uh, room for different types of thinking. So in this example, we have, if you consider the entire array, don't look at the colors, just the entire array represents seven times eight, but we can see that has been broken up into two different pieces. We have a five times eight piece and a two times eight piece. And we can easily see that if we were to figure out the total number of dots in each smaller array and then add them up, we would have the number of dots in the total array. So breaking up arrays is a fantastic activity as well. Now this understanding when we work a lot with arrays is going to transfer to multi-digit multiplication. For example, this array represents 12 times four we can easily visualize 12 times four as 10 times four plus two times four. This makes it really simple to solve. Later on, when students are introduced to the area model, this is a really natural progression. They are already going to have this visual in their minds and it makes the area model a lot easier to understand. So consistently using arrays all year for multiplication means that understanding gets built. It really takes the focus off of just memorizing the facts and onto understanding the facts and understanding how they all relate. So when we ask a student to visualize six times three, we don't want them to visualize the actual digits and the multiplication symbol. We want them to visualize something like this, something that they can relate to other facts 
We can't expect students to have visuals in their minds and to think in a conceptual way if we're not giving them the opportunity to actually see multiplication and what it really means. And I hope this video has helped give you some ideas of how you can use arrays to do just that. Now, I just wanna leave you with two closing thoughts. Number one, regardless of what grade you teach, if you are teaching multiplication, make sure you're using arrays. Even if you are teaching a grade level where your students should already know their facts, make sure you're using arrays. Some of your students never were introduced to multiplication that way. Some of your students are not seeing multiplication that way, and they will all benefit from practice with arrays. Which brings me to point number two. When you are using arrays to practice, don't just limit it to stating the number of rows, stating the number of columns, and then stating the total number of objects. Always think, how can I go one step further? How can I help kids um, make even more connections, build even more understanding? And I've shown you a few ways to do that in this video. You can do that by adding a group, subtracting a group, doubling the array, having the array, um, breaking it apart into different pieces in different ways. There's just so much opportunity. And if you limit yourself to just having kids state the number of rows and columns, there is just a ton of missed opportunity here for building really good understanding. So I hope this has helped and I will see you again in another video.